Let's take a look at Meg Ryan and figure out if she's had any potential facial plastic surgeries. Stay tuned for the cost of these potential procedures and a side-by-side -side comparison at the end. In 1982, at the age of 21, what I'm seeing is that Meg has relatively short eyebrows, so usually the head of the brow will extend medial to the medial canthus or the inner corner of the eye. In her case, it's a shorter brow that I think she was just born with. Meg has prominent orbicular oculi muscle so that muscle around the eye has some fullness to it and you can see it just at the lower eyelid that's not a fat bag or pseudo herniation of fat that's actually her muscle there Meg also has nasal tip bulbosity she has a flat upper lip shape and that's in contrast to people who have a more arched upper lip in her case it runs a bit flatter she also has a strong jawline in 1986 at the age of 25 I see no change in 1989 at the age of 28. What I see here is that Meg has these unique smile lines just lateral to her oral commissures that are quite distinctive for her. They nicely frame the mouth area when she smiles. In 1993, at the age of 32, I see no change. In 1994, at the age of 33, I see that Meg has some gum show when she smiles. And some people just naturally have that. Sometimes it's just because of the height of the teeth, and sometimes it's because of the thinness of the lip or how short the philtrum is that can expose the gum line. In 1995, at the age of 34, what I see is that she has good upper tooth show on repose when she just parts her lips. And that's partly because of that shorter philtrum and the thinner upper lip with the prominent teeth that gives her the upper tooth show that many patients are interested in when they come for, say, a lip lift. In 1996, at the age of 35, you see here images of Meg without any Botox. And you can see just the natural lines that form with the aging process. And just to recap some of the muscles that are involved with forming these lines, you have the frontalis muscle, which is our forehead muscle, and the muscle fibers run vertically. And that's why the lines are always going to be perpendicular to that. So that's why you see these horizontal lines on the forehead. For the glabellar lines, the reason we get those is because of the corrugator muscles. And the corrugator muscles live right here. And the 11s, or or the glabellar lines are going to be running perpendicular to those corrugator muscles. And lastly, you have the crow's feet on the sides here, and that's due to the orbicularis oculi muscle that has a more radial type of almost circular shape to it, and these are the lines that are perpendicular to those muscle fibers. In 1997, at the age of 36, you can see what looks to me like the introduction of Botox, and it's likely going into the forehead, the glabella, and the crow's feet to smooth out those lines. In 1998, at the age of 37, it looks to me like Meg may have gotten a brow lift around this time. Note how the forehead height has increased. Most brow lift surgeries have the tendency of increasing the hairline height. The only types of brow lifts that actually don't do that are the ones that are performed directly right at the eyebrow itself or an indirect type of approach where the incision is made right through a forehead wrinkle or at the hairline itself where you can control the height. Other than that, the brow lifts that are usually done will increase the forehead height to a degree. In 1999, at the age of 38, I see no change. In the year 2000, at age 39, it looks to me like Meg may have started to get some lip filler around this time. Both the upper lip and the lower lip look more full to me. In 2001, at the age of 40, I see no change. In 2002, at the age of 41, I see see what looks to be either the introduction of cheek filler around this time, both in the medial and to some degree the lateral cheek, or this could be the result of just natural weight fluctuations that happen to all of us over time. In 2003, at the age of 42, I see no change, and that's the same through 2011. In 2012, at the age of 51, the biggest difference that I see here with Meg compared to 20 years prior is really the changes in her lips. And especially if you look at her upper lip, the changes you see here might be the result of filler, or it might be that she had a V to Y lip advancement. That's a surgery where mucosa from the inside of the lip is essentially modified to allow the upper lip to get fuller and to bring some of the tissues from the inside out. And so that can increase the fullness of the lip. It doesn't do anything to shorten the philtrum, but it can increase fullness. The problem is that sometimes it brings in too much fullness. 
business. And I've had patients who come to me seeking a lip reduction after a V to Y advancement. But for some folks, it gives them the result that they were looking for. But I really think that when you compare back to 20 years ago, the biggest change is really in that upper lip in particular. You have that fullness laterally and centrally, but more laterally that you never had before. And that changes the appearance of the lower part of the face. In 2013, at the age of 52, it looks to me like Meg may have had a brow lift revision, a lateral canthoplasty, as well as a potential lower blepharoplasty. And these procedures are often performed together to rejuvenate the orbital ocular area. A canthoplasty is performed on the lower eyelid to tighten the area as well as to shorten that eyelid because as we age, that skin tends to lengthen and widen. And as we do that, oftentimes the cant of the eye changes. So you can see here, compared to prior, now the angulation of her eye appears to be more on a slant compared to what came prior. And this is what we often see when canthoplasties are performed. Partly that's done to just reestablish natural configuration. A canthoplasty can really change the appearance of the face and give people sometimes the configuration of the eye area that they never even had before. That's something that has to be performed with caution. And I feel like this is where the upper face really changed and that continues all the way through to today. So the lip procedures that she had, whether it was just filler or whether she had the V to Y advancement, really changed the lower part of her face from what we reviewed in the year prior. And now we're seeing these changes to the upper part of her face and that will have some lasting impact. In 2014, at the age of 53, I see no change, and that's the same through 2019. In 2020, at the age of 59, I'm seeing some signs of change. For one, it looks like Meg may have had a rhinoplasty around this time. The tip of her nose appears less bulbous, and it just looks smaller to me. In order to make these changes to the tip of the nose, usually what's done is that the lower lateral cartilages are repositioned and sometimes partially excised or partially removed in order to create less bulk in the area to allow you to create that smaller tip to the nose. The trick is not to remove too much cartilage because you can weaken the area over time and that could lead to different problems such as difficulty breathing. The other change that I see is that the jawline has much more definition. So this might be the result of a facelift procedure. So before we talked about some of the changes to her lower face that occurred, such as with the lip procedures, then the upper face with the brow lift work and the eyelid changes. And now we're seeing some changes to the mid face as well with the rhinoplasty and the repositioning of the cheeks with a potential facelift. Remember when we perform facelift surgeries, oftentimes it's combined with a mid face type of lift as well. So you don't just get improvement to the lower part of the face and the neck, but you can also see changes to the mid face where the cheeks look repositioned and the nasolabial folds are less prominent. In 2021, at the age of 60, I see no change. And in 2022, age 61, also no change. In 2023, now at age 61, what I see here is that maybe Meg had a fat transfer around this time. She may have also just gained weight, but there are obviously clear changes to her face throughout the mid face and the lower face into to the neck. And again, note the increased forehead height and how this may be due to the prior brow lift procedures. The total cost of all of Meg Ryan's potential facial plastics procedures is $455,000. And here's a side-by-side -side comparison. Since you like this video on Meg Ryan, check out our video on Renee Zellweger's potential facial plastic surgeries.